The interview was quite unusual, to say the least. It lasted over two weeks. It was perhaps a good idea due to the tight, claustrophobic space aboard a private yacht, where usually, like a family, you were crushed together in very challenging situations. So what better than having their first mate live under the same roof for 14 days, see how they react to pressure. My first challenge arrived at 6 a.m. I was sat in an ancient converted stable. We were having breakfast. At the rickety wooden table, placed in front of me was a small green-eyed girl of about 10 months of age, who firstly frowned and then pointed and cried out, Moon! I looked over my shoulder to find a red rising sun. I was soon to discover that her only vocab was the one word Moon. Everything was called Moon, including me and her mother and father. Mm, apart from being a first mate, I became nanny, chauffeur, gardener, made into everything, really. Her father was the skipper of a camper Nicholson Ketch, built in 1925, which was being restored down in Cantier in the Valley Beconcini, along with two ancient J-class yachts, Candida and Astra. JJ's wife, well, she was a very busy woman. She made endless lists, not just for shopping, but itineraries for everything. And she just slowly ticked them off, questioning everything. But still, that was the way on yachts. That was the best way. It was a military operation. She was also quite depressive and OCD. This mix with terrible insomnia led to a terrifying temper. JJ, the skipper, well, he was completely the opposite. Total alcoholic. Stayed in his dressing gown while about 11 o'clock, unless he was on board. He was busy timing eggs to perfection. He was recovering from the previous night's fondue party, where TC had blown her temper tin lid across the floor of a crowded party and stormed upstairs, slamming all the doors. JJ, well, he just dispelled any any problem of the silent congregation and just turned and said, well, don't worry, it's it's okay. She did that at the last fondue party. The, well, that was typical of JJ. Anyway, TC joined the old fizz and fondue party after about ten minutes of a tantrum and everything sailed along. It was just one of her things. The main interview with the skipper, and with the boss, sorry, the big boss down in Marseille, eventually arrived, and uh, I bumped into Felix, a Marseille cat who lived or who dragged himself out of Le Panier in the, in the Bouche du Rhône, Marseille, Le Panier being the last bastion of Beelzebub. He was a pied noir, half Arab, half French. A real ragman to Rockefeller story. Yes, he's later known to us as the French Connection. JJ filled me on the drive down. Medic, well, it was a bit of a switchblade. He'd grown up running wild in the crime and decay. Constantly carried a blowback beretta and a barracuda blade. Either one signalled hell was on its way, of course. He had a penchant for prostitutes and lived in an old picture house. And still had the silver screen onto which he normally played porn movies. I asked what the hell we were doing working for a guy like this. J.J., the very respected ex-Royal Navy officer and a Westminster boy, said he just fell in love with the yacht, not the owner. The interview with Merrick was in French. We were to be paid through an offshore Southern Irish painting company. Doubtless dirty money. 
The interview was very, very strange. Merrick spent the entire time shouting at his PA and drawing what looked like graffiti onto the office walls. He only said a few words to me when they were in French. He said, do you drink coffee? And when I answered yes, he said, there's an espresso machine in the corner. Get me one if you don't mind. The word sexpresso came to mind. By all accounts, he usually took breakfast in a bordello nearby. He's only changed course for us, of course. Anyway, he spent to check my hands, fingernails and teeth, similar to a doctor, and then gave me a chit for the bordello on the corner, which, uh, fortunately, I just took breakfast. Most of the clients are drinking perno and engaging in a little prostitution. <laughs> JJ was totally eccentric. He usually arrived to work with a dog on a motorcycle, which was mad. Then he'd go water skiing while smoking a cigar. He always smoked a cigar. Moon, so morning, noon and night he went water skiing. Most of the time he spent sort of spending money for Felix on fancy auctions, books, antiques. That's why we weren't allowed to touch anything on every sign saying ne touche pas. For one joke, a varnisher had said that he was the only chap who'd varnished a Van Gogh. On board, there were four Filipino girls who each lined up and greeted us each morning with a little sing-song hello, which was a perfect musical third of hello. It sounded as though we were being greeted by four cuckoo clocks. The engineer, well, he was a submariner. He didn't take a shower or a wash from week to week. He rarely came out of the engine room, even though it was blazing hot temperature. So JJ, I questioned him. I said, what is the call of duty? What are we, what are we up to? We don't seem to be actually acting as members of crew. No, no. It's all hands on deck to try and find the owner's daughter. She's gone missing. Yeah, that's the main order of our work. Forget all, forget all maintenance of the yacht. We've got to find her. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult, should it? Where does she normally hang out? That's the problem. She's somewhere in the Mediterranean basin. Nobody knows quite where she hangs out. You're joking. We're not going to be searching the entire med. No, I'm not. This is her playground, you see, the backyard. She... Well, won't she come back sometime soon? Hmm, we don't know. Anyway, the owner wants her found and pronto, so we'd better start looking. And where? Where? Fairly easy. She usually leaves a complete trail of destruction. Bob, from bar to bordello, just like her father, really. So are there any leads? You know, does she... Yeah, there's one lead. She's dumped she dumped a sports car after smashing it up down in Jouelipin. Crashed it against a purse and left it there. She's also blitzed two apartments in Cannes and smashed up part of the chateau down in Avignon. Marvellous. She sounds very dangerous. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Hmm. Um what's she called? Bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah. Champagne. It's due to the champagne. She drinks it morning, noon and night. Hence the damage as well. Verve Clicquot, 1996. I see. Just 1996. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's her vintage. It's all she drinks. Why not just leave this cat, this girl, until she sort of strays back? No, her father wants her found. Can't we just leave and... No. Daddy's little girl. Uh, have we got any pictures? I've done this before. Usually it turns to disaster. Mmm. Good looking girl. Yeah. Not bad at all, but highly, highly dangerous. How dangerous? Well, say she was finished off at every school in Switzerland. Biathlon champion. Rides and shoots. Proper tomboy. Comes with a government health warning. Great. Sounds 
real good fun. Mm. She cut up a couple of boyfriends and uh, and a girlfriend. She's ambidextrous with the blade, you might say. Very good. Girlfriend? Yeah, she swings across. <sighs> Tomboy with switchblade. Great. What's... Anybody know any of her favourite bars or anything? Latitude 39. Better start there. Really. Rupert's outside waiting for you. Rupert? Who's Rupert? One of our crew. He'll help you try and find this thing. Say... <sighs> Did Merrick, why did Merrick check my teeth and hands and thing? Who knows, maybe he wants a little gladiatorial match with his daughter. No thanks. Last thing I need is to be linked to a bisexual tomboy, forget that. Probably best. Half the previous crew have ended up in shallow graves. Christ, what have you got us into here, JJ? This is supposed to be a simple refit. You said the Italian job. Dolce Vita. Yeah. Well, the, Ita the Italians are going to do the interior by the council. We're going to sail across the Falmouth Port Pendennis to do the exterior. Trial, sea trials out to Madeira and back to Antibes. If we live past Dolce Vita. By the sounds of this Bella Regatta, we're going to be... That's going to be questionable. Does the, does the boss have any bodyguards around? Uh, well, he's got 15 armed bodyguards around him, but none on his daughter, by all accounts. Why the bodyguards? He's a banker for some of the African dictators. He gets a bit hairy now and then. Private planes, nine yachts, etc. Spends most of the time, or they do, gambling in Monaco. Other hobbies include women, wine, polo, bloodstock. He owns a team? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Currency trader. Also, antiques and everything. Sales to the big Aga Khan and, you know, sort of Sultan of Brunei. Big, big money. Mm. First things first, let's find the girl, eh? Right. Oh. Yeah. I mean, just look in the all, most of the expensive bars. There's a list here. And, uh, you know, wherever... Is a 1996 or 1998 Verve black label. Usually you can pick a trail up by that. Swinging bars. Some are. Great. We'll probably end up swinging from the ceiling. A fat frame with a studded dog collar. Yeah. Just that's the barman. Verve Clicker. 1996. It's all she drinks. Anything else bizarre? Uh, she wears steel stiletto, you'll hear coming from a quarter of a mile away. Wherever she goes, she leaves marks in flesh or flooring. No. Yeah, we've had to plane the deck down three times. Oh, this little bitch, she sounds like a complete nightmare. Bubbles. Sounds so light and fluffy. Hmm. The girl... Try the letter. We've got rumours that she's somewhere there. Malta, really? Yeah, try that first. You're, you're thinking of crisscrossing the Met to try and find this... Take one of the yachts. <laughs> oh, this is insane. This is mad. A couple of days. Fly back if you want. All for this spoiled brat. Watch out, though. Be careful. The Mafia, remember? The Mafia? You are joking, aren't you? No. No, it's a close proximity to, you know, across from Palermo, Sicily. She wants you to see a, girl, a guy there. You never know. Just be careful. <sighs> Christ. Well, it's cosy, isn't it? It's close, close and cosy. Call me from Valletta. Beautiful. JJ, beautiful. We eventually track the girl down to a restaurant in the, uh, in Straight Street, the old red light district. Hi, my name's, uh, I don't care what your name is, beat it, I know what you come for. We wish we could, your daddy has sent us, to collect you. 
Oh, you're new, aren't you? That's why I didn't recognize you. Yeah, I signed on a couple of days ago. Nice teeth. He always picks out pretty boys with good teeth. Maybe he's looking for strength and good bone structure. Or something for me to screw, at any rate. You any good at screwing? Screwing. Yeah, screwing. Not had many complaints, why? Hmm, I like the sound of that. I never mix business with pleasure. It tends to curdle things. I always mix them together. Get them out of the way first. Listen, I'm here to collect your sister, not slide between the sheets. Ah, I look quite like you. I've got a suite upstairs here. Here's the key. Hmm, better get yourself shaved. Last thing I need is uh, any razor burn. No, you just skip right along, don't you? Yeah, I suppose you're used to getting your own way with everything, are you? Look, it's easy. Not this time, it's not. The yacht's in the harbour. You know, this used to be a brothel back in the day. Do you know that? The entire street was red light. Yes, I know. If only these walls could soak or scream, eh? They say it's haunted, this hotel. By a prostitute who was stabbed to death upstairs in the bathroom. Throws furniture around. Hmm... A prosy poltergeist with a terrible temper. I think I possibly have her soul. That's probably why I feel so at home here. Anyway, tell Daddy you couldn't find me. And go upstairs and change. Listen, Bubbles. Who said you could call me Bubbles? What name do you want calling by? Okay, Bubbles will do. Ah, oh, darling, your thermostat's beginning to stick. You're steaming at the collar. Listen, I'm here to collect you, okay? You're here to do as I say. You're here as Daddy's slave, sent by Daddy. Listen, you little brat. I have come a long way from a long line of very, very bad people who have seen and done things but were probably a lot worse than you. Hmm... Now you can walk out of here, or I can carry or drag you by your feet. But either way, it will be done. You daren't. All right, all right. You can walk, or I am going to drag you by the feet. Or bare arsed. But come, hell or high water, you are leaving on that yacht within an hour. Okay get my things.